All right, it's all about the quest for uh, a living wage, labor suspending the two-day-old strike. Yes, five days, approximately uh, one week. And probably the same question, what is the essence of starting off a strike within 48 hours? You call off the strike. Why not continue with the strike until negotiations are solidly uh, concluded? But I'm saying no, these two give time for uninterrupted negotiations. We'll be to have feel as I may be hungry or dare about to do not know but uh, join us via Zoom from Lagos. He was one time TUC chairman. Join me to welcome Peter Esele. Peter, good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Right. So, so as, as it stands right now, it's like Nigerians are divided uh, you know, between the reasons of like, you know, saying kudos to labor or better still uh, giving them serious backlash for suspending the strike, saying that uh, they should have just allowed the strike to go on until concrete negotiations like, you know, reached with the federal government. As I'm not saying it's okay, but what do you feel about the suspension of the strike action? Uh, well, thank you very much. As a, as a former president of uh, TUC, one thing is for sure, once you lead a strike, you can't please everybody. There are people who feel that you should have continued. There are people who feel that uh, you've done well. But at the end of the day, what's the purpose of the strike? The purpose of the strike is to draw attention. So once you have the attention, then you go back to the table. The purpose of a strike is not to cripple the country, is not to create chaos and anarchy. That's not the purpose of a strike. The purpose of a strike is... I'm seeking an attention. Please listen to me. This is what I'm bringing to the table. And that is what uh, what has been done in the last uh, uh, 48 hours or so. And that is what they've been able to achieve. So what they simply said is, OK, let's give room for talk. Let's give room for further negotiation and see what happens in, in a week's time. Now, some of the opinion that we've been on this for like months right now before Labour went on strike. And of course, with TUC, they are now arguing uh, with this notion that if you cannot come to a conclusive agreement within this month, with five days be enough? Yeah, well, that, well, irrespective of, uh, of uh, whatever anybody feels, uh, there are information that both President and General Secretary of both unions will have. They also they, they will have those information and that will also enable them to make a decision. The first thing you also have to agree is I, I can come up and say I want you to pay me one million naira, and then somebody comes up and says, okay, no, I can only pay you ten thousand naira. It's a negotiation. People need to meet themselves midway. You can even imagine what is going on between the 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 Israelis and the Palestinians right now. No matter the bomb how they've been bombing and what has been going on, they still find a way to come to the table and they want to talk. That is in a, in a case of something happening between two countries, not to talk about uh, uh, people living in same country. So the first thing for labor is draw attention. And I need to emphasize that. And also need to let people know that the, 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 the fact that you, are, you have a disagreement with your employers does not mean that you crumble or you kill your employer. So what we, we, labor is always going to be very optimistic and they will always go to the table. That's why in, in earlier conversation I've had in other networks is that the goal is not to break the table. So when you want to have a perpetual strike, you're also going to break the table. These same people who are saying, labor, labor, why don't you continue? If the strike builds for four, four days with what is happening, you and I know that for good 24 hours, there was no electricity. The same people are going to turn against labor after three or four days and say, oh, why are you punishing me? for something that I know nothing about. So Labour need to find that balance, and I think that is what the leadership of NSC and TUC are doing. All right, now we are having uh, these uh, bits of information, though not fully uh, around that, so to speak. So I'm not saying that Labour is looking at the tune of 100,000. Do you have an inclination to the negotiations right now? Because I feel to say it's 494,000. If I go and say that is not possible because of the current economic situation. So uh, uh, what do you think Labour should be bargaining with? Everyone should have a bargaining chip. For what I saw on the page of the newspaper that's saying Labour might just agree to a hundred thousand. Do you have a, a, a first class information on that? Going to spill because uh, spilling that also brings pressure on the leadership of organized Labour. So the first thing is give them that room, no pressure, let them have this conversation. Then the other aspect is uh, what would I add is to make government also do the heavy lifting. The heavy lifting is 
it's not just about cash, cash, cash. Because if you even if you go ahead and say you are paying somebody three hundred thousand naira minimum wage, and without the structure, the process, and the system to make life easier for that person, the person is inflation is going to take away the the entire uh, three hundred thousand. So what I will also advise is that for government to also look at do the heavy lifting for the workers. You and I know that majority of the problems we have or where salaries goes these days is transportation. So both federal, state and local government should look at the idea of subsidizing the transportation system, make it more efficient and make it easier for, for, for workers or Nigerians to move from place to place. Even the cost of food is also a reflection of the high cost of transportation. So if you subsidize transportation and then you also take care of, uh, of the healthcare. I'll give you an example. I, I, all my life, I work in the private sector. So if so my family, I don't need to bother myself about cost of housing because it's subsidized. So when you look at all of this, so why would I now go ahead and want to shut down? So that's the major challenge. Government should look at those areas that can also help the worker so that they can, they can, their pay can take them home. All right, now join us right now in uh, Abuja Network Center. Is Charity Tank? I believe she has uh, 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 questions also to uh, to ask. Charity, uh, we have a uh, uh, Peter Sele, former president of TUC of Lagos, and join us very soon from Lagos. Over now to you, Charity. All right, thank you very much, uh, Wilson. Uh, to the former president of TUC, I said uh, thank you for joining us on this. Uh, program and uh, my question will be: There has been a school of thoughts by people. Some persons are saying that the increase of minimum wage should not be the major thing to look at. Looking at how the economy is and how prices of goods and services have increased, that labor should be pushing for the reduction of cost of governance. What is your take on that? Yes, I, I think that's, that's also part of it. You see, most of these things that Labour would do is not everything you see on the front pages of newspaper. You, Labour actually started by making about 22 or 23 demands from government, and that's part of it. But again, reducing the cost of governance is not only for Labour, it's for every one of us. You see, you see, moving Nigeria forward is a collective responsibility. So most times people tend to look at the platform of organised Labour to, to want to show that a majority of this responsibility. You have civil society groups, you have NMA, you have NBA, you have people. So it's a coalition of of forces that can take on the political elite or the political office holders to reduce uh, uh, cost of governance. Labor is not going to shut down the country because of cost of governance. Don't forget the law, that's not part of our core, resp core responsibility of labor. But labor can make a demand of it. So taking up whether to reduce the cost of governance has to be a collective responsibility of Nigerians. Even your ballot box, if you find out that a political party is spending too much and they are in office, why don't you use your ballot box to hire and fire? So there are areas where we also need to look at. It's not just about labor, labor, labor for everything that is right or everything that is wrong about our country. Uh, a, a sound of a last say. Uh, any comment on uh, electricity uh, uh, tariff hike? That that was one of the reasons why they went on strike. They are focusing more on the minimum wage. What do you have to say about this? They, they are also talking about the electricity tariff. Yes, but you also notice that in the last three weeks or so, there was a slight reduction. Is also in the cost of, in the cost of electricity tariff. So. These are all part of what they are going to negotiate. And that's why you heard me talk about I talked earlier on about heavy some heavy lifting around the workers. You can pay a million. Now I want to emphasize that again. You can pay a million as a minimum wage. If the structure of the economy is not is not able to absorb it, if the structure of the economy is not there to make it easier for the people, you are going to have challenges. Because one of the things you have to look at is even if you pay me fifty thousand naira and you are taking care of my you are taking care of the head challenges that I will face, that the children will face, and then you are taking care of the education of the children, and you are taking care of the transportation, you are going to find out that the other you the other the average Nigerian worker is not going to be interested if you come up and say, Oh, we are giving you ten percent, we are giving you twenty percent increase. That's what is done in other clients. Whereby you have the government comes and say, Okay, we're increasing wages based on inflation. So if you have 5% inflation, then you know your wage is going to go up by 5% inflation. That is possible because other parameters that makes life easy, the basic of 
or the basic amenities that makes life easy has been provided. But in our own climate, what is the challenge? That's why you're having labor talk about 491,000. Before labor, because labor has become so frustrated that all they believe is that let me just get the cash and sort out myself. But if these other structures are put in place, it will be a lot easier for government to say, okay, we are giving 5%, we are giving 10%. All right, Charity, over now to you in Abuja. Based on trust, because over the years we saw how organized labor was uh, back in the days, uh, even during your time. And uh, now there has been this talk that uh, the people have actually lost uh, trust in labor. Do you think there's something like that? Do you think uh, the organized labor has lost uh, what it has in the past in terms, of take, in, ter in terms of getting attention of government to do what the masses want? Nigeria now for a very long time. So one of the things I've learned is that the average Nigerian likes to live in the past. And sometimes they say, oh, they see me on the street and they say, oh, during your time, labor was more vibrant. But during my time, I also came under criticism. So the fact is that we always look back and think yesterday was better than today. But I'm telling you that these guys who are currently leading are also doing their best. And how do you measure whether whether uh, the people still have trust in, in organized labor? Is the effectiveness of a strike. I, I think for these guys, uh, we've had, during Buari's administration, the strikes were very poor. It was not properly organized. And here you have, it's very rare for us to start a strike on a Monday. Normally, strike starts on a Wednesday. And there are reasons for that, which I would not want to talk about now. But they called a strike on a Monday, and they issued that strike notice over the weekend. And mo on Monday, it was so effective. You and I will agree with that. So if you use that to measure whether these guys who are currently leading the organized labor uh, have the confidence of primarily the first confidence you need is of those who who hired you when you are president of NAC or TUC you are elected by the people of you are elected by the workers so once you have that confidence and all affiliates are carrying out the instructions and which of course is what played out on Monday and uh, partially on Tuesday so you notice that yes they 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 they, they are regaining it or they have that trust of of primarily the workers, and the Nigerians. We are discussing this now because uh, we think this strike was effective. Uh, right now, since there's a suspension of strike, not just be that this might be the end of the strike, knowing fully well that there is an agreement on the ground already, that what the boy is doing is just a, a, a facade, so to speak, to confuse or deceive the Nigerian populace. Now, what do you say about that notion? You see, you see, we always I don't blame I don't blame Nigerians. We've, we've been so popularized that we suspect everyone, we suspect everything. Even if somebody that means well, you still you still sus suspect what the person is doing. But the first thing is that you give benefit of a doubt. And don't forget, just like I said earlier, organized labor is a platform for Nigerian workers first. Because a certain percentage of every workers, uh, organized workers, for example, from the oil and gas to the civil servant, a certain percentage of their salary is contributed monthly to both NSC and TUC to the running of the union. So the first responsibility of organized labor is to the due paying members. So the next phase are to the generality. So what we have now is that you have you have issues whereby the, what is threatening the worker is also threatening every Nigerian. So what we need to do first is give them a benefit of a doubt. Sometimes I, sometimes I ask myself from my previous experience, what do we really want? Do we want a strike that would shut down the country, cripple the economy, and make it difficult for anything to work? Or do we want a strike that is that will create anarchy? For me, that's not strike if you want to create anarchy. Do we want a strike that uh, government will have nowhere to go? No. For me, that's no strike. A strike is effective. First of all, you draw attention. That's the purpose. And don't forget, from our from our days in school, you remember what when they teach us about government this time, they call it civic. Labor labor unions are a pressure group. They are not a top link group. Okay. Uh, yes, uh I after this morning. I was just uh, going through the pages of the newspaper and I saw uh, specifically on Punch newspaper that Labour may settle for, for Saira. Now my question is, all that is happening as a comrade, what do you think 100,000 Naira is enough to take 
someone home. Now, if, if you ask me, it may not be enough. You see, we are trained to look at the glass as half full rather than half empty. You see, so there are also parameters that these labor leaders will look at. But what is in the front page of uh, Punch, is, it may just be an opinion or may also be what they are thinking. It's also possible it may not be 100,000. It's also possible it may be more than 100,000. It's also possible it may be less than 100,000. But what we need to ask ourselves, and that's why you heard me talk about heavy lifting. The heavy lifting around workers, I, I keep emphasizing that. It's not just cash. Even if you pay cash, the, the woman in Agbado market, if you say you are paying 500,000, I'm talking about since you are in Benin, I will measure Agbado market or New Benin market. And if you are in Abuja, the people in Wuse market are equally waiting for government to announce the new national minimum wage so that they can have the share from the, from the average uh, Nigerian worker. So what I'm thinking or what I'm also saying is that government should put, put in place a process whereby this heavy lifting goes is taking off the worker. If I can pay somebody a hundred thousand, oh, let me use I've used this in several interviews. Let me use an analogy. Now, if you pay your driver, I'll give you an example. Maybe Sonny Duke has a driver and he's paying the driver eighty thousand naira every month. And Sonny Duke has a boy's quarter and it tells the driver, okay, you can stay in my BQ. And then now he has solved the problem of accommodation for his driver. And then he also decided that since you are living in my residence, I will also be ensuring that you eat two times a day. And living with Sonny Duke means that it takes 3,000 Naira to feed this driver every day. So 3,000 Naira times six days comes to 18,000 Naira. 18,000 Naira times four comes to 72,000 Naira. Then if you add that to accommodation, his monthly accommodation is about 25,000. So 72 plus 25 is 97. You add it to the 80,000 Naira cash, it comes to 100 and 77,000 naira that the driver working for Sonny Duke and Sons is earning. So what is the market aware that the driver is earning? 80,000 naira. Now, what is taxable? 80,000 naira. Now, the other aspect is taken care of by Sonny Duke and Sons, which of course is not seen, but that is more important. So for me, that is what I expect government to do. Take away those heavy lifting, and even if you come at the end of the day and you are paying a hundred thousand naira, the employee or the employee will be happy at the end of the day because he knows that transportation is sixty percent of his wage, minimum, minimum fifty percent of the wage because of the cost of living. And then, when that comes to, to 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 rent in Lagos, nobody collects rent monthly. It's an annual thing in Lagos. I don't know what they do in Benin. It used to be monthly thing. I don't know whether Benin has joined. So if you live in Lagos, Abuja is also not monthly. Abuja is annual. So if you take away this way, you take away transportation, you find out that whether you are paying 100,000 or you are paying 90,000, it doesn't really matter. But if you if you are not taking any of that away and you are paying 300,000 naira, you are in for a long haul. And inflation will be waiting to gobble it up. B. Uh, are possibly inclined that something tangible will be risked in due course of these five days? Should they be expectant? Or do you feel that somehow, somehow, the energy measures drag beyond these five days? Don't forget that the president gave the Minister of Finance two days to bring up something tangible. Yes, I, I, what the president told the Minister of Finance is not a matter of bringing something tangible. What the president is telling Minister of Finance is Go go work at the figures. First of all, know what if we say you are paying sixty thousand naira, what is the figures? If you say you are paying a hundred thousand, what so what they are trying to do is to work at various figures and various scenarios to look at the effect on their on the budget. That's that's what they are trying to do because it's actually not going to come from uh, from uh, the, the federal uh, minister of finance to just go get it done. But the fact is, you have to know the figures, what you are going to pay. And the governors also need to be part of this to also look at what they can also pay. And then you also have the local government. So, And then you also made reference, your, your other question was that whether people should be optimistic or this is just going to be drag. This is just going to drag. As, as former president, we are wired to be very optimistic. It doesn't matter uh, what is going on. I'm wired. I always think in the positive. So I still believe that something is going to come out of this. And that's why my my, my, my take in all of this is I'd rather see the class as half full rather than half empty.
spirit of positivity because i can see that you're very positive in the spirit of positivity uh let's say at the end of all this negotiation and uh, a consensus is arrived in the spirit of positivity do you see the government living up to its responsibility M majorly, as in majorly walking the, the talk Make sure the federal government always work with talk. I am I'm, I'm, I will be I will give them credit for that. I'm not going to throw throw them under the bus. The challenge has always been the state the state government the state governors because if I was part of the eighteen thousand naira minimum wage, and as at the time I was living, you have less than sixty percent of state governors implemented the eighteen thousand naira minimum wage, and then we moved to thirty thousand naira minimum wage. As I'm talking to you, I don't think it's up to seventy percent that is paying thirty thousand naira minimum wage. And then whatever is going to come now, I don't know whether the state governors, are, even though they are part of the negotiation, my worry is whether the state governors are also going to live up to expectation. But again, it also comes to how our society works. We are a society who does not believe in the rule of law, who have no respect for laws. I'll give an example. When I was Pengas in president, we keep when you you can negotiate for one year, but once an agreement is reached, it is implemented. Majorly because all the guys I was dealing with were all majorly in the private sector. It was when I became TUC president that I discovered that those who have no respect for, for agreement is actually the government. So when the government, especially the state governors, when you have no respect for agreement, it becomes difficult to even talk to those in the private sector. So gradually you are having the private sector companies also beginning to act like that. In other climb, I'll use South Africa, for example. You cannot, once you sign into law, no company or government can violate that. That's one. And then number two, this is the only country where you hold people's salaries at the end of the month. There's nowhere in the world that somebody works for you and the end of the month you are owing him one more, two more, three more. You are encouraging corruption. You are encouraging stealing by owing somebody his monthly wage. So those are the challenges that we face. It's probably is also part of our growth, uh, our growth phase, but it's, uh, that, that part of us is very disappointing and discouraging. Uh, uh, bringing our time or taking our time to really join us via Zoom all the way from Lagos. We just joined us. That was uh, Peter Isele, president of, uh, uh, former president of TUC and Pengen, saying, sharing his own opinions and views on this particular discussion. Peter, thank you so, so much.